<laughs> Hi. So welcome, Patty. Yeah. Hi. Uh, you're the founder from Spock. Uh, in the B2C or the peer-to-peer, as you always say, uh, marketplace. Um, you founded it together with Amin. Um, what was the first idea? So the first idea was to, to provide users with a free platform where they can easily sell their own used things and discover new things in their area just by browsing through in a very lovely way. and and. We wanted to bring this experience to their mobile phones um, just right into their pocket. And it turned out um, to be then one of the the biggest and fastest growing mobile first marketplaces in Europe and in the world. Wow, that's amazing. So when was it? Um, So Spock, we we launched in autumn 2012. Wow. And and it's still still ongoing. And I I remember it, it, it was the first marketplace, not just mobile, but with really local content, yeah. So you, this was one of the one of the assets from this from this marketplace that you are uh, able to find, so to say, the the stuff around you, no? Yes. So, so it, it's it was a bit like window shopping in your neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you, when you opened the app, you first saw the products just around the corner, and when you browsed through, the further they got away. So it was really like discovering what's out there. And if you found something, you just interact with the user in the app um, directly and just go over it if it's near or if it's further away, items that ship. And so and so this was really the, the idea from the beginning. But so, I know mm-hmm. there was the loop before. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this was the idea for Spock from the beginning, but the yeah. company started out with something different. It's finally, uh, yeah. it was a social product recommendation platform for consumer electronics, where users um, get recommendations, personal recommendations for what's the right notebook for them or the right visual art com- camera without having a vast technical knowledge. Yeah. And what was, because, you know, today, uh, lots of our startups, uh, they have to promote their, their products. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What did this work out? Was it like you said it's not working, or maybe we have an, now a better idea, or how was this process? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think to, to put it down, this kind of the sparkles were missing at some point. So mm-hmm. um, it was the, the the platform was growing in, in a decent way, and uh, with marketing, we could have easily reached the goals we also. Um, set with our investors back then. But for us, it was like, there was something missing. Um, some, uh, somehow these sparkles where users are really getting fully into it. And, and, and we have to resolve that we would personally expect if we were doing something. So we knew we, we, we should do something different. And, yeah. and then also found out that from the, it was finally we, we developed, um, everything in a way up front so we made a big plan up front and we developed the platform for eight months i mean startup time that's quite a lot of time um, yeah. and then when we went on the market we found out that there were people were using out of the 10 features just five features and five others were missing mm-hmm. but for you as a founder it was more a gut feeling to change mm-hmm. the product yeah it was i think it was looking at the, at the user behavior and not being satisfied ourselves and okay. not being satisfied with, yes, we can fulfill the, the, the milestones we set with the investors. That was not enough for us. Yeah. yeah. So we didn't want to go this path. We wanted to do something that really has an impact, that has a big impact, that has a big meaning. So um, what was there any kind of person or another startup or maybe an investor or <laughs> somebody who really inspired you to do this? Yeah. Hmm. I think there are a couple of things. Um, so the first is with our first ideas, Armin and I inspired us. The sec- second thing was product-wise, like the old schoolness um, from, from the existing platforms, which just yes, left so much room to do something better and to provide the user with a better solution. Then personally thinking, I, I did my PhD thesis in the area of crowdsourcing. Um, and while doing my research there, I also came across a lot of business models that use um, 
user innovation. So that included users in the product development process. Mm -hmm. And there I saw a lot of business businesses and were quite impressed how they build up their, their businesses. And I think another thing that somehow inspired me or kind of made for me personally this tipping point, this tipping point was um I actually I always had a lot of ideas. Um, mm -hmm. how to make things better, how to improve yeah. things. Yeah. Um, but I never wanted to, to have my own company mm -hmm. to go this path. As a new, it's, it's, it's very hard to do. Um, and the chances that you succeed are very low, but yeah. still I always had those ideas. And then I once came across a, a lecture at the university where founders, um, and, um, top managers were talking about uh, from their snake has you know, seen, as you would yeah. say. So they're really talking, they're telling their personal stories, sure. their life stories and how they ended up where they are. Yeah. And that was a moment where I realized it's hard to do something on your own, but it's not impossible. And understanding this, that it's not impossible, um, made for me this, this switch where I said, okay, let's fuck it, just try it. Um, how would you define success in this journey? Is it really the, the little stories from, from the customers and um, you've been market leader in many markets in UK, in, in the Dach region? Yeah. What was your success? Hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very broad question for me in a way. So I think success in general for me is making something with impact. Mm. Success in this way is to to having been able with, with this great team to 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 build something outstanding um, mm -hmm. and in a more technical thing, I think it's it's setting your goals, um, adjusting them if it's the best strategy to to adjust them, um, and then fulfilling or overachieving them. So what was the most important thing in the product? Was it the, 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 the content, the local content, the other users, UI, UX? What, what was the most important thing? Yeah, it's, I, I know it's hard to say. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's mm -hmm. always a good mixture of it. Maybe if you would say it now. I think actually all three of, of those things that, that you mentioned. So the, the product, the UI, UX, it was so easy. It mm -hmm. was I remember instantly. Yeah. Yes, you remember, yeah. just take it out picture and, and it's out. Yeah, just love, love the way to browse through. Um, that was one of the things. So, yeah. so you, you, the user didn't have to think. You can just use the product in, yeah. in a very easy way. Um, then the, the localness, yeah, that you, that you have those close connections that you saw things that it was an, an experience to, to browse through. And in the end, the third thing was the community. So I, I remember users, in, in, from the beginning telling us when they, they, they browsed through the app and uh, one girl was telling me that she was looking for a snowboard for herself yeah. and then um, her boyfriend asked her, hey, can you also find me one? So found yeah. another one. <laughs> and then a friend of theirs um, asked her again, hey, can you please find me also one? So she mm -hmm. got three snowboards in the end. And while this, I think she got a couple of handbags and some other stuff yeah. because she just uh, found them there. Yeah. Or, yeah. Some other users who told us, one, one, one guy told us um, he was buying uh, drums mm -hmm. um, on, on the platform and he picked it up from, from another user and they, they got into, 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 into a discussion. And in the end, they, they started a chat session. So they were sitting together and playing <laughs> together for a couple of hours. And, and, and there are so many such just lovely stories that came that happened there over, over the years, over the yeah. time. Um, that really made made it made second hand selling a bit of a different it gave yeah. it a bit of a different flavor. From your from your perspective, what what what, what were the main um, parts in the company culture? Mm -hmm. So I guess this this leading by by example um, and and uh, all the the passion we brought into, but not just yeah. us. I mean many people in the team, if not, not all of them, that was that was a big part. Um, this sticking together. Mm -hmm. like, uh, it's not it was not never about an I, it's it's always about what we can do. So like the supporting each other, the 
that we were always the last <laughs> in, out of, of the office, but we always also always tried to help. So if, if there were some, some issues, someone was struggling with something, we tried to help. And if we couldn't do anything content wise, then at least we could bring a, a cup of coffee or a can of Coke. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so that was a, a very crucial part. Then um, I think that you have a clear focus and goals so that everyone knows why are we doing this, that mm. it matters. Everyone knows why am I here? So why am I important? And I, I'm, I'm deeply um, convinced that every single one in, in the team is, is, is when I've been there was really important. Uh, and you said uh, it's so it was so important to give the right information um, in the right moment. So I'm sure that the onboarding process was a main part in the company too. No? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it it all started before. So not just the onboarding, but the hiring process. Yeah, where yeah. Uh, yeah. it's really important to to pick the right people for the team that also fit to the team. So we we when hiring someone, uh, in the end, before making the final decision, it was always the, the the small team around where this new new person would be that had the final say. So if someone in the team said no. It would have been a no, and we couldn't convince the person otherwise. It would yeah. have been a no. So it was always making sure that you have people that also fit together in, in, from the, right from the beginning. And then, yes, onboarding was, was I think, the first four weeks to make them count. That, yeah, that's yeah. quite important. Yeah. So really, yeah. give the responsibility from the beginning, help them get on, on in, in speed. Um, we have... Uh, we had a buddy, buddy system, so yeah. where it was someone not from from your immediate team, but someone else from the company yeah, yeah. to share, so that you yeah yeah you, you get a more into everything, you get yeah. different views of, of of things also. We had this kind of new introduction, so um, where Armin was telling a little bit about the the story, how we developed until. The, Day, um, yeah. um, where they learned all the small things in a very personal way um, that was also quite quite important for the culture. And so, and so, how how did you react when some someone um, uh, made a mistake? You have a saying like, "If mistakes don't happen, you're not fast enough." Yeah. So, <laughs> it's it's just part of the of the of the course. Um, mm. Ideally, you don't make the same mistake twice. So you learn yeah. from from it, but in yeah. the end, it's you want to achieve something. You you have some some goals and you have some things you want to to create, and that's the thing that matters. And and sometimes the path is more directly, and sometimes it's more like this. Um, in the end, it's you want to achieve it, and that's the thing that matters. Yeah. How did you offer employees learning opportunities? First, I don't like the word employees. Mm, okay. That's yeah. some I personal remember. thing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you said this to me. <laughs> I, I think this, this is somehow something that creates a, a, somehow a separation, which is totally nonsense, and 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 um, gives uh, gives away some kind of runs, removes responsibility, uh, which is yeah. also totally nonsense. So it doesn't make sense. It's a team. It's, it's a team where you can do something. So uh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, colleagues. Yeah, colleagues. Yes, um, and. <laughs> um, for the learning experience, so the one is, I think, is really being responsible from day on, day one on, mm. so from the beginning on. Then it's a lot of learning on the job, having the people in mm. your in your smaller teams, providing you very quickly with the information that you need to, mm. to get up to start, helping each other out there. Um, in the end, it also started a little bit in in the, in the hiring process uh, already, so. We are having people in, in, in team who are eager to, to learn, who wanted to, to learn new things and, and also learn it by themselves. I'm not such a big fan of those um, classical courses, um, as I think you're, it's much faster to nowadays with the internet, with all the information that's out there, to really get the information by yourself and then apply it directly on something that really matters. Um, and as you say, it's training on the job and peer to peer learning is it's so much more. Important yes. and then additional things so we tell everyone like if you want to go to, to conferences if you want to go to to whatever else um, just tell us um, yeah. and, and just or just do it um, if it makes sense so everything that yeah. really made sense it was possible so what would you say what is the most important thing for candidates in startups 
the most important things. So I think one is to to somehow laugh uncertainty. Yeah. So <laughs> to laugh this challenge to 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 discover things on your own to 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 to, to kind of solve these these riddles to 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 yeah to challenge yourself. Um, yeah. yeah. And also to, to, to get things to the ground, so uh, to, to really just do things. Yeah. yeah. Make huge plans, but more execute and make plans on the way. So any other HR-related advice you could think of? I have for personality um, and some core talents or ability, like, for example, analytical thinking um, yeah. and also the, the, the eagerness to learn. Um, so higher for that um, instead of for the current technical or professional skills, because, I mean, in a startup, you, you, you're not mediocre. You don't want to do the, the normal things. You want to challenge yourself. You want to be about, among the best globally. So you want, and for this, you need to learn new things. There are things happening so fast. You are in an environment that is open for change. So that's why you're in there. Uh, so you need to be fast in order to leverage this change. And so you, you, you want to have people in, in the team that are able to do this. So, and, and just the professional skills, they can be good, but they can be outdated in half a year. Um, yeah. 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 So personality yeah. first. I wanted to ask, where's your journey now going? Yeah, that's the mm -hmm. last question. What, what, yeah, because I know you're not uh, with Spock anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, so, what's the next step for you? Mm, I'm, I'd say I'm pretty open uh, at, the, at the moment. I'm using the time to, to explore. I'm also doing investments with our investment vehicle, the 12 rounds mm -hmm. capital. Um, also, a couple of business angel investments into startups. Um, and yeah, then let, let's see. I mean, I, I don't have it on, on my, my map at, at the moment, but if something comes up that really excites me, maybe at the time to get into the startup roller coaster again. Yeah. Yeah. Never say never. So we're now in the last part, and we always do at the end a, a kind of complete sentence. Yeah. So your business walls. My business, our business was um, the start of a new area in secondhand marketplaces. Yeah, nice. The superpower you wish you wish you had is understanding the markets and uh, the market and its opportunity at hand way better right from the beginning. <laughs> Yeah, I would love to have this too. <laughs> you would like to know more about China. If money wasn't an issue, you would. <laughs> if money wasn't an issue, if money wasn't really wasn't an issue, I would. I would create the world to be to have a clean environment mm. to have no poverty, to have no hunger, to have no violence, um, to still have, give people the opportunity to, to grow, to learn, to, to develop, um, to achieve their goals. Um, yeah, to just make it a really a nice place to, to, to live in. I think something more at hand, I would provide every child or let's say every late teenager or young adult um, with an opportunity to travel. Mm. So for example, I know in Europe, give them interrail ticket or let them earn in, an interrail ticket um, and to, to find their way with the low budget through multiple countries. <laughs> and it would do, in the end, I think that would, that would help to make people more open-minded to see that it's somehow bit different but the same everywhere um, and, and yeah to, to, to then flourish even more <laughs> okay so thank you so much um, thank you for having me and it was lovely chatting with you yeah, here, hear you soon okay.